Welcome to Connecting the Community podcast. I am your host, Marge Andre. I will be connecting you to people, organizations, and events that create community. I am creating this podcast in Richmond Hill, an eclectic and very culturally diverse community with lots of trees and streams and interesting people just up the hill from Toronto. On this podcast, I will be talking with Vanessa Lay and Carmen James, two of the board members for the Richmond Hill Sports Hall of Fame. Welcome, Carmen and Vanessa. Marge, happy to be here. Very good. Thanks, Marge. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. I'm really looking forward to this uh, this conversation, and we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, I don't know that much about Sports Hall of Fame, and I think others don't as well. So, uh, again, it's great we're having this conversation. Vanessa, let's start with you. Please introduce yourself. What are you all about, and what is your involvement with sports? Uh, thanks, March. Um, so my name is Vanessa Lay. Um, I am uh, was born and raised in Richmond Hill. Um, I my family has been has lived has lived in Richmond Hill since the the sixties. Um, so I I grew up here and and I was very involved in in sport in Richmond Hill as well. I came up through the Richmond Hill Hockey Association. I uh, played soccer, played t ball, um, and it ended up actually through the hockey getting involved with the Richmond Hill Referees Association as well. Um, so that's the kind of where my background is, is a lot on the, the hockey side. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was approached to uh, join the the Sports Hall of Fame, it was kind of a natural fit in celebrating sports within Richmond Hill and and being able to to recognize those that have participated and, and given back to the Richmond Hill community. Right. And I hear you still do uh, some refereeing, correct? Yes, I'm still uh, still very much involved on the ice. Um, I do uh, quite a bit actually across the province. I skate um, a number of different leagues with the Ontario Women's Hockey Association. I skate um, university hockey with the OUA, um, the OWHAs, the U22, the elites, so they're junior hockey. Um, and I do some skating as well for um, the OHA on the, the men's junior side and obviously still within Richmond Hill in the minor hockey. I stay involved as much as I can be. Okay, and have you made it down to one of the women's professional hockey team games yet? I hear they're excellent. I have not, unfortunately, I have not been able to personally attend. Just winter scheduling is is always yeah. a challenge. Just okay. usually when they have games, I'm either on the ice or off yeah. somewhere across the province. Okay. Um, but I have had actually a number of, of close friends of mine are actually uh, officiating those games and on the ice for those games. Um, so that's always uh, a really, really cool experience to see and celebrate them. And um, people always kind of forget that there's the officiating aspect as well as those officials have worked hard um, and fought for that opportunity as well to be on the ice in those games so it's been really really fun to to see the growth of that league and uh, see the opportunities available for female athletes for sure very good yeah and you are a realtor here in Richmond Hill correct yes I am a broker with uh, Joseph Kreiner real estate it's a third generation family business Uh, my grandfather started it back in the again the 1960s when he moved to Richmond Hill um, and my mom has since taken over as the broker of record. So I've come in and, and worked with her for a number of years. Um, and we're still very much involved as much as we can be in the Richmond Hill community. Yeah, no, I, I've certainly seen that. So thank you for all your involvement. Okay, Carmen, let's tell us what you've been involved with. I believe you've been involved with figure skating many years ago. I don't want to say how many years ago. I'm yeah. pretty, uh, you were... I'd say so, yeah. 38 years. Okay, 38 wow. years. Yeah, okay. Yes. And um, I don't have Vanessa's background in sport, but um, I started out with, because of my children getting mm-hmm. involved. First, they were involved in soccer. And uh, from soccer, we went on to figure skating. Uh, my daughter, she watched the 84 Olympics. And then she said to me, you know what, mom, I want to be a figure skater. So I said, OK, fine. So. We got, you know, I had them registered for skating and I'm an accountant um, by profession. So they were looking for a treasurer at the club at the time. So since I've got the accounting background, they said, well, why don't you become the treasurer? So I went on to being the treasurer, vice president and president of the Upper Canada Skating Club. 
So my kids started skating and, and it started like back in 1986. And here I am still involved in skating. I am presently at the Richmond Training Center. I have been there for the past 20 years as um, administrator running the school. Mm -hmm. And um, I, we, we have been very successful so far. Mm -hmm. I have lived in Richmond Hill for the past 30 years. Prior to living in Richmond Hill, I was heavily involved with skating and soccer in aging court. Hmm. Okay, so you really and have a now, long history with us uh, with sports, and thirty years is not bad for being involved in Richmond Hill. So, yeah, I think you got both. Yes, of you and 30, well 30, 38, Well, thirty eight years all together with um with soccer and with no. Well, as a matter of fact, oh my goodness, that's telling my age. So, I think <laughs> we're looking at more like forty two years with Ooh. soccer. And 38 years with skating. Tom was the one who said to me, we need um, committee members for the Sports Hall of Fame. And he said, I can't think of a better fit than you. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, fine. So I got involved with the Sports Hall of Fame, I believe, in 2009. Okay. Okay. 2009. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, like I know, I've talked to people, and they don't know about the Richmond Hill Sports Hall of Fame. So can you give us the history, a timeline? Okay. The Sports Hall of Fame started back in 1993. The founding members was Tom Graham, Ed Sackfield, Ed Kenny, and um, Vern Dines, Mayor Bill Bell, Linton Freeberg. Out of all those gentlemen, the only one that's still alive is Linton Freeberg. So, yeah, so the, and he was the commissioner for the city, well, the town of Richmond Hill at the time. So, um, so it started back then, and then it folded back uh, maybe about five years later. And then we started, it folded back in about maybe 2001. And then we picked it back up um, in what did it, I think it was about 2007, mm -hmm. 2007, we picked it back up okay. and it's so, been going ever since. So when did the actual so, place open at the um, Elgin Barrow Arena? Elgin Barrow, um, when they moved, the Sports Hall of Fame originated out of Tom Graham Arena, oh. but that was never, yeah. That's where the Sports Hall of Fame started from. That's where um, they moved it over to Ed Sack to Elgin Barrow back. That was in 2007. Um, but I still don't think it's getting the um, action that it should. Because yeah. I thought maybe if we had a more, if we had a better space that we could showcase it. Because Elgin Barrow is closed for most of the time. It's only opened in the evenings. So, Vanessa, can you describe what actually is there? What is the display? Um, yeah. Yeah. So the, the current Sports Hall of Fame, how it's set up is, I think the most um, eye-catching piece would definitely be the um, the plaques for the, the previous nominees and the previous inductees. Um, as you go down the uh, the upper floor on Elgin Barrow East, um, down the hallway towards the end is actually lined wall, just wall to wall and to end with all of the different plaques for the inductees. Um, and they're just, you can read and, and, and see here's the history of sport within Richmond Hill. And it's, it's a really cool, almost time capsule of, of mm. um, just the timeline of sport within, within the town and, and now the city. Um, I think a lot of people are surprised by just the, the longevity of um, the sports history of, of Richmond Hill um, and how long certain sports have, have been taking part in, and competing and, and a part of our community. Um, and you see that reflected through the, the difference um, in the inductees in terms of the, the age of them. There's a number of you have younger inductees for, for different sports. You have older inductees. You've got sports that some people don't even realize are, or are even within the community. Yeah. Um, the maybe not the mainstream sports. 
Um, so that's that's always really cool is being able to to kind of learn about the actual inductees themselves. Um, we've also got memorabilia that people have donated, um, whether it's inductees or a lot of times it's just people donating things that they found from their parents or their grandparents that they mm -hmm. didn't even realize they had. Yeah. Um, so we get a lot of um, really fun memorabilia that shows, again, the history of, of sport within Richmond Hill. Um, yeah. And we do have displays. So there's displays within the actual Sports Hall of Fame itself at Elgin Barrow. Mm -hmm. um, and we've actually started creating satellite displays as well, whether it's in other arenas, other community centers. Uh, we recently had some at the public library um, that was at uh, Young and Major Mac. So there was a satellite display there a few months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that is is part of what we're trying to do to get more awareness, get more traffic um, yeah. and kind of bring the Sports Hall of Fame out to the people as well. Okay. Yeah. No, I never thought of it as a history lesson, but I, I, I think it is. So that that's great to think about. I think for people who are new to Richmond Hill, possibly new to Canada, I think it would be a very good thing for a lot of people to do. You know, you, it's not, a, there's, it's free, correct? You don't have to pay to get in? No, no, nope. there's no, no, no charge. No charge. Okay. Nope. And yeah, the arena is a public building. So it's whenever it's open, the, the Hall of Fame is open to whoever wants to come take a look. Okay, so I'm going to encourage people to take some time. You, you, an hour or two would be all that you need, so it's not like it's a whole day event, but uh, to come and actually see what the history of sports, and, and I think it's a good just glimpse of history as well. There's a new figure skating school that's at the Elgin Barrow Arena, in, uh, and it operates throughout the day. It's there from 1 to 7 in the evenings, Monday to Friday. So hopefully that will bring some more traffic mm -hmm. because the building will be open and it's going to be open 12 months of the year. Mm -hmm. right? So with the new figure skating school and they'll be in there all summer because they're also running an eight week camp. So that should bring more traffic in and more awareness of sports in Richmond Hill and the Sports Hall of Fame. Yeah. Hopefully. So Hopefully, let's, let's hope. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah. a big question, you know, why do we need a, a Sports Hall of Fame? We've touched on history, but is there something more that, what is the real purpose? Vanessa, can you give a crack at that? What do you see um, the real purpose? For me, it's there's it's a multifaceted question for sure. I mean, obviously we've, we've touched on the history and um, I, I was a history major, so I could talk all day about, about mm -hmm. history and, and um if you don't commemorate things, they get lost. Yeah. You you forget about them. People move on, and we all live busy lives. Before you realize it, you it's been forgotten. Mm -hmm. So for me, the history of it is is huge in wanting to make sure that these people and their contributions are remembered. Mm -hmm. um, the second part as well is, um, and this is a big one for me as as a, a young athlete um, and someone who grew up in, in Richmond Hill involved in, in sport every day of my life was the inspirational aspect of it is these are people who came up and grew up in the exact same community that, that our young, our young people are now growing up in. And they're able to see these athletes. Um, some of them, they may have even met, they could be your neighbors. They could be someone you went to, who went to the same school as you mm -hmm. and seeing the success that they've been able to have in their sporting their sporting journey um is only a, a, a an inspirational thing for that next generation to say well if they can do it why why can't i what's stopping me from doing it okay thank you very it's very, also very, a mot motivational factor mm -hmm. yeah okay no I, I agree with that you know yeah okay i want to ask you what your favorite item is in the sports hall of fame uh, Carmen, let's start with you. What is what's your favorite thing? My favorite thing is um, looking at all the you know all the inductees okay. Okay. and to see what they have accomplished over the years and how devoted and committed some of the inductees because the inductees it's not just build it's not just athletes. We have builders. We have officials. So the Sports Hall of Fame, it's not comprised of athletes alone. You know, it's all these many other people that have made the Sports Hall of Fame. And when you look at, you know, you go in and you look at their accomplishment, you have to really marvel at how much they've accomplished. 
Okay, so nice. to me, that would be that would be my favorite look at going in, looking at their accomplishments and seeing all the inductees and, you know, where they've all started from and where they have ended up. OK, very good. Vanessa, what's your favorite thing to look at? Um, I, I'm along the same lines as Carmen. I, I really do love. Um, every time I'm there, I'll, I'll pick a new plaque to read and, and I learn about um, someone new that's in um, the Hall of Fame. And, and and honestly, even if you only do one at a time, you're going to be there for a while um, because there is such a rich tapestry of sporting history within Red Hill. Uh, another thing I've always really enjoyed is the displays that are more called the sport arts. Um, and what that is, is that's an annual um ceremony that honors our our previous um champions from the previous year so for example this year we're hosting the um the 2024 sport awards which is recognizing sport champion um so i always love seeing the the growth of sport year over year within richmond hill and being able to to learn more about our current athletes um that's always uh something i love to do just because i know that time passes and but sport always kind of keeps going. And so every year there's a new group of athletes and they're, they're competing. And, and I see how hard they're working every year. You, you see them, they're in, they're on the rinks every night. They're out in mm-hmm. the fields every night. Um, and to them, that, 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 that provincial championship, national championship every year means the world to them. Mm-hmm. Um, so to be able to, to commemorate that and celebrate that for them is, is always really fun as well. Very good. Okay. I'd like to highlight some, Richmond Hill athletes that we should know about, like, okay, I, we all know about Elvis Stoichel, but what are some of the other ones? Um, Carmen? Emmanuel, Emmanuel Sandu mm-hmm. is one who has accomplished quite a bit, like, just like Elvis. The other person, she did not live in Richmond Hill, but she trained in Richmond Hill and got represented Richmond Hill was Gabby Daleman. She, um, 16 years old, she went to the 2014 Olympics. Vanessa, can you name some athlete, Richmond Hill athletes that we should know about? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously, um, with the hockey background, I can throw out, I mean, Jordan Bennington right now, a current active NHL goaltender with the St. Louis Blues. Mm-hmm. He's from Richmond Hill, born and raised in Richmond Hill. Josh Binstock is from Richmond Hill. Um, I actually know uh, his family through, again, through the officiating. His father was a hockey um, But he he went for beach volleyball, was at the Olympics. Hmm. Uh, Rosie McLennan, gold medalist for the Olympics, trained out of Richmond Hill in um, trampoline, I believe it was. Um, and uh, throwing out a current yes. athlete who's still actively competing in and born and raised and still lives in Richmond Hill is Megan Farrell. She was at the most recent Olympics in uh, in snowboarding. So there's such this rich history of these athletes and there's still who, so many who are competing at a high level mm-hmm. um, that we're hoping to get the awareness out, especially if they're still competing because the amount of support that they need emotionally and, and financially mm-hmm. um, is the, the it, there's such a need to support our athletes. I know they have programs like Own the Podium, things like that, never a, an end to the, the need for support. So anytime we have, I think, athletes from Richmond Hill, who are currently active, um, we want to be promoting them and, and and getting word out in order that so that they can succeed and continue to compete as long as possible. We also have tennis with Dennis. Yep. We've yep. got a number of tennis players as well. Players, right? yes. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot about but him yes. as well. Yeah, I know. Mark, we could go on for days with all okay. the athletes, but there are so many. And this is one of the things where the sports award and the um, the Sports Hall of Fame is important that we can recognize these before they pass by the wayside. If I'm gone, Vanessa is gone, new people coming in, they would not have that information. I would like to talk about um, Phyllis R- mentioned Phyllis Rawlson. I think a lot of people, yeah, that's a park, but she was a, um, an athlete as well. I, I unfortunately don't have a good history um, oh. of Phyllis's full background. Uh, she definitely was, from what I remember, a, an athlete within Richmond Hill. And and uh, that's kind of, you, you hit on the point where some people may not even realize that absolutely there's parks in every neighborhood and, and a lot in arenas and, and community centers named after these people from Richmond Hill. And they may not know the history of, yeah. of yeah. Um, who that I'm. Someone's curious about why something's been des- um kind of just uh, named in honor of somebody, look them up. You, yeah. you might be surprised as yeah. to why, uh, who they are and what they were all about. Yeah, very good. Phyllis Rawlinson, if memory serves me correctly, I think she was an equestrian. 
Yes, she was. Yeah, yeah, she was. And she, yes. uh, you know, a long time ago and f- as a female, yes. was I think was a trailblazer. She, and she's given a, yes, a significant she, yes, piece of property she, to this uh, city as well. Uh, at Phyllis Wells and Park, yes. I, I actually do love that place. So I uh, enjoy going there and there's a barn and you can see, look in and see the stalls and quite interesting. So I want to compare Richmond Hill to our neighboring municipalities. I know it's not always a good thing to do, but just to get our identity. From my perspective, um, figure skating has been a big thing for Richmond Hill and compared to York region, uh, other, you know, city of Toronto everywhere. We have had Elvis Stoico, we have had Emmanuel Sandu, we have had Gabrielle Daleman. Those are Olympic medal winners. And I can't recall in figure skating any other um, city. Richmond Hill has got the most um, elite athletes. Well, I mean, I can touch on the hockey, the hockey portion briefly, Carmen, is um, Richmond Hill's always had a challenge on the hockey side just because of of where it's located, the prevalence of um, there's a, yeah. so many elite teams that are out of out of the city, um, out of Markham, out of Vaughan. So um we the the challenge and the the desire and uh the competitiveness for elite athletes is um is, is very hot so trying to to keep athletes within Richmond Hill in general you, you see this a little bit across i guess York region and in the city of the Toronto i think one thing that's very um very important to realize about Richmond Hill is how much of a shift we've seen in in even the things like the demographics mm-hmm. of who who lives in Richmond Hill now um, it has changed uh, uh, so much, even from when I was growing up and 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 was here. Is when I was growing up, you'd see your more traditional sports um, would be the the most popular ones. So your hockey, your soccer, your figure skating, um, your baseball. That's that's not necessarily the case anymore. No. We've got one of the most multicultural cities, according to the most recent census. We have a higher percentage of non we say non resident. Canadians, then we have a higher average than York Region itself. Yeah, yeah. Than the we city do. of Toronto, the province, and even Canada. Yeah. So the demographics make a huge difference in terms of the sporting culture of the city, and we're seeing that reflected in the sports that we're we're seeing come up as nominations for the sport awards okay. for the Hall of Fame. We're seeing things more like your non traditional sports, so your chess, badminton, martial arts. Things like that. So we're, it's it's really interesting to see that shift, yeah. Um, and and gaining a new awareness and appreciation for maybe what we would consider your non traditional sports, um, but they're no less important and no less, I think, deserving of the attention and and the the recognition um, than our traditional sports that maybe you and I are used to when we were younger. Yeah. No, I think things are are changing, and I think I think the change is a bit challenging. Like for the city, what facilities do you provide for? So quite interesting. And I think uh, 10 years from now, the inductees into the Sports Hall of Fame may have a different sport than what you see today. So a couple other things, that aspects of sports. One are senior games. Um, are these recognized at all within the uh, Hall of Fame? I know the demographics that we do have a high percentage of older adults. We have never had... A nominee, maybe that's something that one of our committee members could start pursuing and see what seniors are out here that should get recognized. Say that uh, I know there's a, a 55 plus, the seniors games are quite active. And I have heard sort of through the grapevine, my husband, that uh, there are some really good athletes um, at Richmond Hill does really well with the uh, these 55 plus games so just curious what was happening what are we looking at in terms of games what what, could you give me an idea what uh badminton table tennis uh those are the two i can think of there is an official um 55 plus organization for games i know it works out of mcconaughey and then there's provincial like I think Mm -hmm. even a level before and then there's provincials and i think even nationals and international so I'm going to make sure you guys have the information about that. So if if we have somebody exactly who's who's from Richmond Hill and they've accumulated a um a wonderful year for themselves, whether it's an athlete or a coach or 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 an official 
Um, I'm partial to the officials myself. Mm -hmm. They would be, they would strongly be set for the hall of fame. Um, and we'd be happy to, to discuss and, um, um, the biggest challenge that, and, and I think we're, is kind of coming across is we can't move forward or proceed with something unless we receive a nomination from outside of the committee. Okay. Um, so that maybe this can be a call to action for people. If you think you, you know, of a team or athletes, um, or coaches or builders or community ambassadors submit a nomination, and we will, we will look at it and we okay. will move forward with it if it's a good fit. Um, in touching on specifics with Special Olympics, uh, we actually have a, a team that was just nominated for this year's sport awards and who's, I believe, going to um, honor this year's sport awards for their, um, it was a local team hmm. through, the special, through the Special Olympics. To be honest with you, um, we're just looking at our committee now. I'm you know, sorry. we don't seem to be, yeah, we don't seem to be attracting the new Canadians to our committee. It's the older generation. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to be critical of what you're doing. I'm just curious. Don't take it that way at all. It's okay. again, it's, yeah. it's, it's no. as we said, reality is we can't move forward no. with um, providing and, and giving recognition to these athletes. If, um, yeah. if we don't receive the nominations or the information about them, we do yeah. our best as a committee yeah. to, to try and find these athletes as much as we can, but it's, it's not always easy. No. no. Um, so if someone, if, if someone has knowledge of, of these people, that they think they're deserving of recognition, please let us know. It, to be honest, if we could have someone from the McConaughey Center sitting on our committee to bring this information to us, we would greatly appreciate that. I would like to have someone on the committee from each sport in Richmond Hill. If we had, we need, we need that commitment for, you know, come from committee members. Okay. I have to ask you because people who know me will expect it. But is there any pickleball? We have, not, um, we have not, as of yet, seen uh, any pickleball athletes nominated for... If down the line an athlete is nominated, and I understand, I believe there are leagues and there are championships, and, and there is a, a sport organization um, that governs pickleball. Yep. Um, it's. I don't see why it wouldn't be considered as a as a sport. Down. And then this conversation, we're seeing that there needs to be greater involvement and such. So uh, I'll do what I can to... Uh, Get that out. Also, in terms of memorabilia, yeah. Vanessa, you as a realtor, you probably have uh, really encountered this. So people are cleaning out, moving, downsizing, p p parents of moving into retirement homes passed on, and they're going through this stuff and they, they don't want to throw it out. Um, if people come across things that um, they aren't sure about or or think that might have um, a historical significance with, with sport in Richmond Hill, absolutely, please re reach out. For example, I... I I kind of laugh about it. I remember through just through my own business as a real estate agent, wasn't even thinking originally at the time about the sports hall of fame. I ended up meeting a family. Um, oh, well, we've actually got this, um, a banner down in the basement. We don't know what to do with it and what it was. And they said, well, take a look at it. And when they pulled it out, it was a, I believe it was about 20 feet long. Every single athlete had written a good luck message and well wishes on that for Elvis. Soiko as he went to the Olympics um, we offered, I can't remember if, I believe we asked if Elvis himself wanted it. I uh, mm -hmm. don't remember if he had agreed to that or if he took it or if it ended up in our archives, but things like that, that some, you might not even think of what it, what it could be, Yeah. but just when it, when it comes back out, such a cool story and such a cool history of it so many years later. Yeah. So absolutely. If, if you come across something that you think might be a good fit to be recognized or, or would have a significance, please let us know. We'd be happy to. Okay. In wrapping things up, just want to ask you what your vision is for this Richmond Hill Sports Hall of Fame. What's your um, vision? I think just that it continues to grow. Uh, it's it's something that I think um, we're all very passionate about. Um, those of us that are on the committee is we want to continue to see the growth of not only the, the Hall of Fame, but just the the recognition and the awareness of our athletes and our coaches and our officials and our builders. Um, because again, as we said, time, time passes so quickly. And before you know it, 10 years, 20 years have passed and you, you sometimes lose um, the, the awareness and that recognition is, um, and, and I say this as an, as someone who was a, a competitive athlete for many, many years in the moment, it seems like it's forever. Your career 
is can be so fleeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one day it's it's done, and it, it's something that we want to make sure the athletes and, and and these individuals are continuing to be appreciated for for what they have done, not only for themselves in their own careers, but also for Richmond Hill. I mean, we take a lot of pride in people from Richmond Hill who who have been able to reach the pinnacle of their sport. Um, they're some of the best athletes at what they do. Um, so we want to make sure that they're continued to be celebrated for that because um, it's a big sacrifice as well in many ways. Yeah, I agree with what Vanessa says. Also, too, on the other hand, um, with lots of these athletes, from a monetary point of view, it's been very costly for the parents and, you know, the dedication and the commitment that they've put in to follow through and they have gone through injuries, they have suffered and they definitely need to be recognized. And again, I would say this is why I would like to see someone from each sporting organization being on the committee that no one gets left behind, that, you know, we are here. And this way, I think, in my opinion, and I guess Vanessa would agree that it would grow the Sports Hall of Fame. You know, okay. because there are a lot of things out there that we're not we're not aware of. And this is why we need committee members to bring that awareness to us. OK, you know, they, and then yeah. we, it could be a much stronger. It could be a much stronger mm-hmm. all of fame. And also, to we don't want it to fall by the wayside like it did. We'd like after putting all this effort into it in reviving it, that it continues to grow. Very good. OK. Um, I do want to end the podcast with a question that I asked the August, and that is name one thing you really like about this community. How about I start with you, Carmen? One thing you really like about Richmond Hill? I like the community spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, Vanessa, can I ask you the question? Vanessa, what what is one thing you like about this community? Um, similar to, to Carmen, I think just the the sense of civic pride and being from Richmond Hill. I mean, when you look at where we are as York region, um, we're, we're central in York region, um, surrounded on all sides, right below us is Toronto. And then you're, you're heading North. And, but I still, um, and as, as someone who's traveled across the province, for, um, it's always kind of fun when you, you meet someone else from Richmond Hill, it doesn't happen a ton. But when you do, there's that that instant camaraderie of going, oh, I'm I know where that is, or I'm from there as well. Where did you grow up? Like I grew up here. I went to this school. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find sometimes you don't see that with the larger with the larger cities. Um, is you could let's say for example, I've had friends who grew up in in let's say Scarborough, and they just oh well, it's so big, like they they just don't like they never would have crossed paths or know anybody. But I find with Richmond Hill, whenever I meet someone else from Richmond Hill we've all somehow got like four or five friends in common that you just Mm -hmm. happen to never cross paths. Um, And the other thing as well is I think just the, um, for the size of what Richmond Hill is, I know it's not a small and small city. um, Definitely not anymore, but it still is doing its best to maintain that small town feel. And I really love that. We see that every year with, with the events that the city hosts, like the, the winter carnival, Mm -hmm. um, I, I love the winter carnival. I grew up in one every year when I was a kid. And to me, that was just the coolest thing that Richmond Hill had a winter carnival. Yeah. I remember winning the hockey championship out on Mill Pond in elementary <laughs> school. Yeah. Um, and, and that was mind blowing to some of my friends who weren't from here. Cause they're like, wait, you, you played a hockey tournament on a pond. Like yeah. who does that anymore? And it yeah. was so much fun. And you see the very good responses from both of you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to add many things to uh, the podcast notes, how to get in touch with uh, the Hall of Fame, to donate, to get involved, to nominate, just to be in touch with you guys. I think that's important that we do, we work at connecting our community. This is called the Connecting the Community podcast, and that's what we need to do. So again, thank you both of you for taking the time to do this. I have really enjoyed uh, listening to you. You guys got a lot to offer. So again, thank you so much. Thank you for listening. I would very much appreciate you sharing this podcast. Please tune in next week as we continue to explore the community. Consider emailing me at marj, M-A-R-J, at marjandre.com. 
I welcome suggestions for podcast guests. Stay well, stay connected. <laughs>